we live in Huntington Beach because we live at the beach and we live in a small place and the reason we live there is because we have this as our yard and now it's all shut down which I understand that I don't want to go swimming in this water. I actually smelled it on Friday night we could smell oil in the neighborhoods down here we live about six blocks from the ocean here. We've been down here about 30 years and haven't uh, haven't seen too many major spills at all but uh, now this is the first one in, in 30 years of, of this impact. It reminds me of COVID, when COVID first hit. The beaches are empty. It's, it's a, a horrible tragedy. I think it's gross. All these platforms out here, all these pipelines, is it really worth it? Hell no. I mean, they just need to stop all this t all together on the California coast. With a lot of small spills, you're just constantly impacting these coastal habitats. And so even though this one is small to medium, well, so was the one in 2015. The amount of oil that it takes so that uh, an embryo fish doesn't develop its heart properly is parts per trillion. <laughs> so like nanograms per microliter of oil, which is very, very low concentrations. Like it's almost below our ability to detect the, the chemical dissolved in water. But it's those effects, you know, those sublethal effects that affect your ability to long-term survive, perform, and make babies that are the biggest consequence from oil spills. So it can persist for a long time in the environment, and especially if it gets into sensitive habitats like marshes. Uh, off of sort of rocky or sandy coastlines, those are a little bit easier to, to clean, but once it gets into wetlands, nobody's cleaning that up. The, the technologies that are brought to bear for dealing with mistakes are so rudimentary, so stuck in what we were doing in the 1960s and 1970s that uh, it's, it just doesn't compare with the technologies uh, and the effort that's brought to bear to get it out of the ground in the first place.